Hello and welcome back to iSpy to a new video in a series of lens and cataract lectures. After congenital cataract, now we are moving towards acquired cataract, which is the opacification of the already formed normal fibers and have different varieties, which we have already discussed in classification part. So out of those, first we'll pick senile cataract, in which I'm going to cover risk factors and causes of senile cataract, types of senile cataract, stages of maturation, gradings, and complication related to senile cataract. So, first of all, what is senile cataract? The word senile itself describes the old age. So, senile cataract is what we get in the old age. That's why it is also known as age-related cataract. And it is the most common cataract in acquired variety of cataracts. So, let's see the risk factors that what are the important risk factors of this age-related cataract? Because this is age-related cataract. So most common factor is age. And how aging is responsible for cataract formation? For that, I would like you to go and watch the video of Physiology of Lens. The link of the video you can find in the description box below. So this senile cataract is common after 50 years of age. Then if we talk about uh, sex ratio, then uh, males and females are equally affected. Next is heredity. The glaucoma is very well known for running in families, but definitely cataract can also run in families. And we can have a family history of cataract. So one of the factors is hereditary predisposition. Then next is ultraviolet rays that can accelerate the process of cataract. Then next number of those people having malnutrition Especially if they are not taking vitamins, they are not taking the proper minerals. And this is why cataract is more common in lower socioeconomic status because they may be having malnutrition. Then next is, uh, next important thing is smoking. That those people who are smoking have higher level of cyanates which causes protein denaturation and there are more chances of cataract in these patients. Now and final one is Dehydrational crisis. Yes, dehydrational crisis also play a role in cataract formation, especially nuclear cataract, about which we'll discuss in a while. Now, senile cataract can affect different parts of the lens. Based on that, senile cataract can occur in different forms. One is nuclear cataract, affecting nucleus of the lens, and can start from cortical area as well, and called as cortical cataract. And sometimes it can be mixed cataract, which has both the components of nuclear cataract as well as the cortical cataract. So from here, uh, we'll start with these one by one. Let's first start with nuclear cataract. And as we say nuclear cataract, it is telling us the opacity occurring in the nucleus of the lens. And we know from the anatomy that nucleus is present in the center of the lens. So nuclear cataract can also be called as central cataract now what will be the patient's complaint patients having nuclear cataract will complain of more loss of vision in daytime or bright light now why is that so let's understand with diagram here i have an eye it is an iris and in the center here is pupil and here i have lens with nuclear cataract so what happens here is in a day time or bright light pupil will constrict so when pupil will be constricted, the light rays will be going through the center only, which will be obstructed by the opacity present in the center of the lens. And the patient will not be able to see. Whereas in night time or dark conditions, pupil will dilate. And when pupil is dilated, the light rays will be able to pass from the periphery where lens is clear and form an image. And patient will say that I have more loss of vision in daytime, but in night I can see. So from the patient complain, I can say that in nuclear cataract, there is more loss of vision in daytime or bright light. Or I can say improvement in vision in nighttime or dim light. Now let's talk about what are the pathologic changes in the lens or the structural changes which tells us how does nuclear cataract occur. And the answer is sclerosis, which is basically the cause for occurrence of nuclear cataract. The sclerotic changes which takes place in the lens. 
where sclerosis actually means hardening. So, nuclear cataract also called as hard cataract. So, sclerosis will make lens nucleus hard and will lead to increase in density of the lens nucleus which results into the increase in refractive index of the nucleus as refractive index depends on the density of the structure. And now because of sclerosis, nucleus has become more dense, so has more refractive index and hence will lead to increase in refractive power of lens, which is converging power. Let's understand this with example. So here I have an eye where refractive index of lens nucleus is 1.42 and refractive index of air is 1. And as we know from our basic physics fundamentals that when light travels from rarer medium to denser medium, light will converge. And here in eye optics, we have rarer medium which is air and denser medium which is lens nucleus. So normally what happens is when light travels from air to eye, light rays get converged at retina. But now what we are saying is in nuclear cataract, refractive index of lens nucleus increases let's say it increased from 1.42 to 1.47 for example so the difference between refractive index of air and lens in, is increased from the difference of 0.42 to 0.47 that means now the light rays that are coming will converge with greater power and will focus before the retina and when light rays converge in front of retina we call it as myopia right and in this case, it is because of increased refractive index of lens nucleus. So, this is called as index myopia. But how would you get to know that the myopic patient in front of you is having index myopia and that too be because of nuclear sclerosis. So, in this case, or patients of this category are press biops who must be already using glasses for near vision. But when you test vision in these patients you will find that patient does not have difficulty in near or they are good in near vision without reading glasses or with less plus power for reading as compared to the actual required one as per the accommodative need and this phenomena we call it as second sight now let's understand how this happens from a previous example with what is press biopia so, press biopia is physiological insufficiency of accommodation due to which light rays coming into eye will focus behind the retina. And now because of increased refractive index in nuclear cataract, light rays will focus before or we can say that close to or on to retina and image will be clear without any additional aid. And patient will require less plus power or no power at all for near vision. So what is second sight? Second sight is improvement in near vision due to nuclear cataract in patients who are already press biops. So when a patient of press biopic age comes and complain that he or she is having a difficulty in distance vision and near is okay, then it is most probably a nuclear sclerosis. So here one important thing to note is history taking. So history taking is very important to rule out the right diagnosis and with complaints and symptoms from the patient, we can reach out close to or shortlist the diagnosis. Next, a nuclear cataract is appearance on torchlight or slit lamp examination. So on examination of nuclear cataract, we find the discoloration of nucleus which is due to the accumulation of pigments called urochrome which is derivative of amino acids and amino acids are coming from the protein breakdown and protein breakdown is occurring due to aging and as we already know lens consists proteins and due to aging there will be a lens protein breakdown especially crystalline proteins and then these proteins are breaking to form amino acids like tryptophan and these amino acids metabolism will lead to formation of pigments like urochrome which is responsible for nucleus discoloration. So on examination nuclear cataract is yellowish in color and as it progresses it, it acquires all shades of yellow and has different stages. So early nuclear cataract appears as light gray then it becomes yellowy 
then it becomes orange in color when it progresses more it becomes brown in color and ultimately it becomes black these colors help in grading of nuclear cataract so grade 1 is light gray or greenish yellow grade 2 is yellowish color and grade 3 is amber or deeper yellow color grade 4 is brown cataract or popularly known as cataract of brunescence and grade 5 is black cataract or popularly known as cataracta nigra. And a nuclear cataract may extend almost to the capsule and the entire lens appears as nucleus. So ophthalmoscopy may not reveal any fundus glow. In cataracta brunescens or black cataract, the pupillary reflex appears black. This is the grading system that we generally use in our regular clinical practice but there is more scientifically designed cataract grading system available called LOCS which is lens opacity classification system which grades cataract based on changes in color and opacification and the one which we are using nowadays is LOCS type 3 that we'll discuss in a separate video some other day. Uh, so one more last thing here to understand is if my cataract is yellow in color, so my lens is yellow in color. What I am trying to say here is, normally lens is transparent. There is no obstruction. That is why everything we see is clearly visible. And if your lens becomes yellow in color, everything will be slightly yellowish in color. So patients with early nuclear cataract will complain of yellow colored vision which is known as xenthopsia. So that's all about our first type of senile cataract, nuclear cataract. Now we'll move on to the next type of senile cataract that will be cortical cataract in next upcoming video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, comment and subscribe.